Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, uh, October 30th, which is the day before Halloween. It's, this is our 300th show, so nearly six years doing this. Happy to do it. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Freshly vaccinated and ready to go. Very good. All right. How are you back? Oh, vaccinated. I thought it said vacuumed. I thought, how are you vacuumed? Sure. I, oh, sure, <laughs> sure. I, I got a robot that does that for me, but yes, uh, okay. I can do that too. Yeah. Our guests today are Boudreaux from Kentucky. Hello, Boudreaux. Hey, guys. We have John Richards from across the pond in England. Welcome. Hello. Dread Pirate Higgs. How the devil from, are you? How the Western devil are you? Canada. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Um, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about it religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in your town, well, I'm betting money that you're just not. In Knoxville, in, Knox, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, soon to be 1,100. The Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about them after the mid show break. Well, I'm bet what's our topic today? We're going over hate mail. Hate mail. Hey. So, you know, I don't want to start off on the wrong foot, but there's a lot of angry listeners, and we're going to listen to them. <laughs> today's show because yeah. if we don't we're just going to get more and more emails for them so we need to find a way to get them uh, a phone line to us or something while we're ah, we don't want that it's not yeah, going to be my phone line that's right it's not going to be my phone line i can tell you that uh, <laughs> uh so but before we get into the the true meat and potatoes of the show how about a little bit of pasta led to us by our own dread pirate higgs would you mind leading us in our weekly invocation all right i shall quab be me captain i shall not want he maketh me to float in salt waters. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness, for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. <clears throat> thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog. My goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life, and I shall dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Guys, catching up with everybody before we get into the uh, the 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 weird deets. Eric Green, good to see you. How you been? How's the family been? Good. Everything's good. We we had our first annual Hallow Green. Nice. Oh. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Uh, How that was yeah. that? What happens there and what goes on there? It's a bunch of middle schoolers and a bunch of high schoolers and running around the house and outside and eating candy and bombing for apples. And yeah, it was a wild, wild time. But Eric, uh, let me tell you something. Don't doubt the impact that you have on the number of kids that look up to you and that you touch on a regular basis, like just the soccer practice that you're doing, the fact that kids run in and out of your house for like playing video games the mm -hmm. the the daughter mm -hmm. sleepover stuff the i'm sure community service that you're employing it's all really great you're the dad of the community how can what else can i say and well, friendly thanks. neighborhood atheist goes a long way is all that's true go. yeah now we just got to get you into disc golf too i think that'd be right. I mean, that's the, the last missing step <laughs> dread pirate higgs the quest Arr. for chaos and quabs what's going on with uh, you my friend well um still fighting the good fight as you know Mm. uh but more recently uh we've been i've been uh, stripping the uh outside of our float which is called the ss quab uh preparing it for winter and uh, we usually have this will be the first time in you know since the pandemic that uh, we have a christmas parade Ooh, in our okay. community yeah. so i want to make sure that the ss quab is ready to go and that uh we can fest doing it appropriately and mm -hmm have her running down the streets singing chanties and uh you know sharing the good news of uh, our newly lord now you gotta explain this to me it's a boat or is it a car that it's a pirate like... it's a pirate ship yeah it's a pirate ship i know you say that and you're nodding because you've seen it and it's used to you you've become desensitized to the concept but for those <laughs> on the radio and for those who like don't understand 
the magnitude of what you're saying. Would you mind describing this 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 float? Well, it's essentially we just built a a frame of a of a pirate ship, like a galleon, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you know we have a couple of masts and we put up our our uh, our flags as uh, as uh, as uh, sails. How jolly. And uh, we've got lights and all that kind of stuff, and we tow it around behind a, a truck, and uh, we sing shanties and uh, and uh, songs like uh, "Always Look on the Bright Side of Life." Nice, that's, okay. that's a favorite. And sure. uh, you got smell out of John Richards. We toss out those uh, <laughs> the gold coins, you know, the doubloons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, With the yeah. candy inside. Ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're okay. we're a big hit in this community. Uh <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. I can imagine. Um, so quick one for me before we get into some heavy hitters. Uh, I just got double vaccined a couple of minutes ago, and I think I voted last week. So if you're listening to this, whether you're in Kentucky or Tennessee area, you can do early voting. You can vote now still. Uh, please do so. And the more who do it, the better. Um, and if you can get vaccinated too, also important. Let's let's kick some diseases butts. And it's never fun being sick. Um, now, Sean Richards. <laughs> Well, hey, yeah. What am I, I chop liver? You know you're the last guy. Come on, John <laughs> Richards. Where are we going? I know. I I um I accept. Uh, uh, what's the word? I I stand back in, in turn in instead of. Uh, oh, what's happening? I've got something happening here. Sorry. Very British. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I, I bow to Larry. Let him go first. Okay, okay, age Larry. Before, age before <clears> you. You know, <laughs> sure. What about age and beauty? <laughs> <laughs> now, I went to a Halloween uh, costume party last night, first in a long time. Uh, went as well. Where's Waldo? Okay. Uh, but it was Classic. outside. Yeah, it was outside. So it was cold. I didn't get to, we didn't stay that long just because of that. And Listen, it's, I, I hate it when you got to wear a coat over your costume, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Kind of defeats the purpose. You can't be Waldo with a coat on because then it's just right. like, who are you? Just a guy with a weird hat? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I totally yeah. get it. I totally yeah. get it. Did you have the glasses though? I did. The, the costume came with big horn rim glasses. Nice, nice, nice. I, when I was a Christian, um, Waldo books would terrify me because I was under the impression that there was always a God who could see me and like, you know, it gave me a very big sense of paranoia. So if I was looking for Waldo and I couldn't find him, that made me feel like he could have been anywhere, you know, off oh. the book, <laughs> under my bed, in a drawer. I'm like, I try to find him and I couldn't. And I believe in these supernatural things that can happen. I have no basis for reality. So yeah, right. they were really scary books for me growing up. John Richards, your turn. What's up? Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, we don't really do Halloween to the same extent over here because we recognize that it's really just a commercial opportunity for the U.S. confectioners. So we have our own celebration. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Dred. We have our own celebration over here, which is about the same time of year, which is the November the 5th Bonfire Guy Fawkes event. Ah. And the town nearest me, Little Hampton, does the second largest bonfire night uh, celebration on the mainland of the U.K., Oh, I love those. And so do you, the, the bonfire is there still costumes? Be, uh, people do costume, yeah, yeah, but it's um, it's more of watching a parade of traction engines and uh, girl beaters of you know I'm, I don't know what it is. It's girl beaters. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what do you call them? The the, the twiddlers of um, batons, Cheer, cheerleaders, Jugglers? Cheer, cheerleaders. That's the ones. Yeah. That, that's the ones yeah and bands marching bands and uh the, the whole event ends on the the green sward before the beach and there's this huge bonfire that set fire set light to and then a firework display and and of course the fairgrounds have all gathered around mobile fairs so it's a fantastic event but i didn't go <laughs> <laughs> because i'd only just returned from this year, that is, I didn't go. I have in the past. I'd only just returned from France, where right. I spent five days mm. with three children, female children. And um, I want to tell you that at the passport control, I got some very funny looks. For, for, for the American listeners, France is Pentos, 
and and UK is Westeros. Now we're all caught up. <laughs> nice, John Richards. Yeah. Please continue. You're totally fine. Just have well, to help with some. I, I, I'm loving the I'm loving the Eric Idle reference to you know always look on the best side of light, on yeah. the right side of light, and um, <laughs> and of course because I was away on holiday, I haven't done quite so much scheming as I normally do. Okay, and, uh, and and this means that you'll be welcome to join me, you guys, to to take part in the Global Atheist News Review later on today. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah! But uh, but um, I and I, I got out the Global Atheist News. That went out no problem. I did that yesterday. But the other thing I wanted to say is, when this show ends, mm -hmm. I'm going to get another jab. This will be my fourth. Oh yeah! Mm -hmm. well, nice. Good. Very good. Very I good. Got, I got some today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my sixth one now, so I believe. Can, you can get yours on a Sunday? That's that's kind of surprising yeah, yeah. that everything's closed. Oh, that... no. It, uh, we got things called CVS here. They're just like local pharmacies owned by a oh. major branch, and you can just walk in, get them for free, walk out. Yeah, we, mm. we they give you a coupon to get more stuff, too. It's great. Capitalism. I guess God is still shutting everything down here in Canada <laughs> on Sundays. Yeah, we, we don't really do Sunday much anymore. Mm. Yeah, yeah you know i'll tell you if if we can get less people to sit on a pew and spread the covid next to each other and more of them lining up to get the vaccines i think we'd see a reason for there not to be as many prayers right right welcome um, uh swedish steve uh, he just joined hello? us wanted to welcome oh, hey. you hey hey hi. how are you doing hi steve hi hey, my friend nice to see you <laughs> yeah, my to hear, uh, to hear you. My, anyway, my my connection doesn't allow uh, videos. You're fine. Sweet it makes Steve. for good radio. How's life as a new dad? Are you kind of settling into it? Yeah, for sure. It's great. It, uh, you know, you're legally allowed. Can't... You have to say that. Just just <laughs> make that a point. You can't you can't back out. It's not like having a cat. You can just be like, nah, I turned the cat back in. Uh, we have good social healthcare here so mm. i can ship him off if i need to <laughs> <laughs> well when i when i went to france i told the guys at the passport control on the way out that i was kidnapping these these children you see mm. oh, ah. that's, that's that's a idea. Good idea. <laughs> one of them doesn't even have my surname so that pro provided a little bit of a problem but then on the way back i told the guys <laughs> at the passport control that i had kidnapped them but i'd given i changed my mind and i was taking them back for a refund <laughs> just too much trouble yeah. guys be, before we stimulate any more hate mail uh uh how about we go into it real quick we at least handle the first sure. one sure. sounds good go so victor me. dread pirate eric green john richards we got a email uh it's let's chat sc at gmail.com you're free to send in more email if you want a lot of the mail we get is positive a lot of the mail we get is complaining on se videos i've done in the past a lot of the mail that we get is just straight up anger and rage and wants attention so some of these will be anonymous but the first one comes from Reed azaz who has an umbrage with larry rhodes also known uh -oh. as Dr. five larry's justification for deism is just as problematic as simulation theory in this week's episode i heard him bring up both and I'm just trying to say that the theories do the exact same thing by taking physical things we already understand and know of and simply inflating their loose concept of being into the cause of reality and its nature without any evidence. I don't see how one has any more substance than the other. They both just serve the same function of being an explanation of the universe with no strings attached. Why is this so common in atheist circles? Larry, what well, are you doing? First of all, I think he mis misunderstood what I was saying. Uh, I don't believe in deism. I don't believe in uh, that there is a programmer out there, but what I'm saying is we can't disprove them. And the, the best thing about them, if you're a deist or a, a, what do you call it, simulationist, is that they don't have any dogma. <laughs> they, they don't have a God telling you what to tell people to do, to pass laws to support what they want. It, there is no way to know what uh, a deist God uh, has in plans for it. Matter of fact, the deist God could already be dead. Yeah. It just requires that, a, that there was a God of some sort that created the universe and kicked it off. Uh, he could, he could have gone away. He could have died. He could have uh, just got disinterested 
in the yeah. whole experiment and left. Who cares? Yeah. Anyway, and, that, and I don't believe was, either one of them. That was uh, espoused by Spinoza, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Spinoza's God. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was just saying that uh, it beats out religion, per se, if you believe in either one of those two. I don't personally. Why not? Because it sounded like you were always for deism every single time we brought up. You're no, like, I'm Larry no, Rhodes I'm and I love deism. <laughs> it's my next favorite thing next to souls. No, and no. you just bring it up in every show. I'm just I like, would well, not. And, and you wrote a whole book on deism. Didn't and you? now no, he's flipping the turbos. Now he's flip flopping. We don't like flip floppers on this show. Just saying. Waffler. <laughs> Waffler. Yes, flip flop. Hey, hey, Eric Green, what's your opinion? Deism uh, simulation theory. Are they the same thing at the end of the day? Uh, well, I guess one's kind of rooted in magic and the other's rooted in, you know, science. Reality, I would, I would science. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, it's hard to, uh, obviously it's hard to disprove such things, but it's, you know, hard to disprove any imaginary thing you can come up with. So um, that doesn't really help anyone. Um, right. So I think, you know, uh, the best thing to do is just look for evidence. Is there any evidence for, you know, glitches right. in the matrix, so to speak? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Uh, simulation theory, I think the, the reason it, 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 it makes me think uh, it's possible is that the, the likelihood of it. Uh, it's just, you know, <clears throat> seems like something we will eventually create. So, huh, interesting. Um, we got Dread. Do you have a uh, weigh in on that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Sean B. Carroll. He's a he's a physicist and a philosopher. He's actually uh, got a posting over at uh, John Johns Hopkins University uh, as as a natural philosopher. So he does philosophy and physics, and he was talking about this. Uh, and it's the same thing um, about the you know uh, transpermia, where the idea is that life started on Earth from. Uh, mm. hitched a ride on a comet or or came from mars it doesn't answer a question it has no explanatory power because it just pushes right uh it pushes the the answer away you know it kicks if, the can if, it's a, if it's a if we're a simulation mm. could it be that the simulators are a simulation of other simulators you know it just it has no explanatory power and where does it stop? It's just simulators all the way down. Yeah, like, where did they come simulators from? Simulators all the way uh -huh. down. Exactly. Yeah, like who made the robots? Well, the 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 simulation made the robots. Their yeah, sim yeah. the super simulation made those mm -hmm. robots. John yeah. Richards left to hear infinite you progress, in. right? Yeah, infinite yeah. Progress. all the way down. I, I, I think I think those simulators are actually turtles. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> the 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 reason that deism comes into this is because it's the least obnoxious of all the various options mm. that uh, could explain the origins. And it's a it's a bit like saying Mother Nature done it rather than right. God done it. Yeah. And Mother mm -hmm. Nature, as Larry says, she has no doctrine to spread. She doesn't want us to. Uh, she's not sticking her nose into our genitalia, you know, like most religious people do. And uh, so therefore, I'm, I, I find if I had to choose, that would probably be what I'd plump for. But it, mm. as Fred says, it doesn't explain anything. Victor, right. love to get your thoughts on this. De uh, deism, uh, which is a belief of God, you know, died and just has no evidence for him of being around, or simulation theory, which feels more appealing to you? Uh, none of it. Or, 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 wait, can I hack the simulation later <laughs> on the next level or something? I think there's definitely some people who probably have already, and we already know their names fairly well. Kanye West being one of the leaders, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a given. That's a given. Yeah, that's a given. But, but, but how do you how, how do you level in the simulation right like where does the experience came from right 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 exactly and like how how does why is push-ups such a hard grind to increase your level yeah uh, <laughs> i wanna i'll throw this out i feel like deism and, and simulation theory are are very distinct in terms of they are both problematic but they're problematic for two very different reasons one Obviously, with deism, you're opening up the door to the supernatural as a way to answer problems. And I don't see a difference between deism and magic, you know, or or supernatural beings and pixie fairy dust or or, or werewolves. Like you're just sprinkling a dust on top of a complex problem, expecting the solution to be more simple, but you're just adding more complexity. And everyone knows it's hard to get glitter off of stuff. You're just making a bigger mess. That's it. 
Whereas with simulation theory, it's a really interesting problem because if we live in a simulation, then everything that we're looking at is simulated, which means we don't have a frame of reference of knowing what's simulation from what's not a simulation. And so when we come into the argument of like, this is all simulation, it's the same problem as someone saying, everything's a creation by God. By the way, I have no frame of reference of knowing what something that's not a creation looks like or what something that's not a simulation looks like. When all your evidence around you is fake, you have a case built up off of fake evidence. Even if it was the case that you don't, if we are in a simulation, we have no basis to make an argument that that's the case, right. simply because we have no frame of reference to compare anything else against. It's one of those really, really simple ones that if you just understood that, you can immediately dismiss simulation theory and move yeah. on to hopefully a better argument. Whereas the deism still has all that baggage. <clears throat> even if there is no dogma, I still feel like there's a lot of baggage there. Larry, what do you think? Well, even if you got real evidence all around you, you can still make a, a, a leap of logic that is not supported by the evidence. Very true. Um, you know, the people were raised all their life thinking that God created everything. Mm. Well, then point to everything and say, there's your evidence. God is real. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a leap that's not supported by the evidence. We don't it's yeah. better just to say we don't know where things came from as far as the universe yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. until we find out, you shouldn't jump to any particular deity or any particular right. simulation. We just yeah. don't know. I mean, that's an honest answer. Yeah. Right. And Boudreaux. Oh. Boudreaux? Go real quick. Real yeah. quick. Um, I and I'm no expert in simulation theory at all. Um, but I again I, I think I just want to point out that my the, the biggest reason i would say that it is a possibility is again because of its likelihood like how likely we are to create ai and, you know, we already do right right and in some ways yeah so I, it's it, it the the argument i've always heard for simulation theory comes from the likelihood that you know um it, it's it, time and uh, you know, as technology increases, it's just it's just likely that it it can happen or has happened. Um, it's it's harder it's harder to argue for it from a frame of reference of of like you're saying that that that's a difficult um, way to make the argument. Um, from within it, there's no basis to make that claim. Right. But right. from like an objective point of view, yes. But how do you get that objective point of view? That's the criteria. And once yeah. we got that, then yes, now I'm willing to entertain it as an option. Yeah. And is it more likely than a supernatural being? Yeah, because those are tangible sure. things. Yeah. We can tie that to a server. Yeah. Hopefully we can make sense of that. But we don't have a basis to make that claim rationally if we are in a simulation. That's why right. hearing it inside the simulation makes no sense to me. John Richards, what's up? Sorry. <laughs> well, this is exactly what uh, Douglas Adams was mocking in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe when he said the answer is 42, isn't it? <laughs> yeah but isn't that ascii code for yeah. asterisk <laughs> yeah it, 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 it can be whatever you want to be yeah. sure dread throwing in some more yeah so I, I was gonna say in just some of the readings i've been doing uh, a suggestion is also made that uh, in answer to the fermi paradox hmm. which is where are they if there's life throughout the universe where are they it could be as like we see in our own uh, technological advance that uh, we can build better and more sophisticated interior worlds that we can explore without having to leave the planet. Mm -hmm. Rather than try to develop a technology to span light years of space mm -hmm. in order to visit other worlds, we can create them so that we actually put ourselves into a simulated universe we are our own simulators and that could be an answer to the fermi paradox yeah it's also a great basis for a wonderful horror story speaking of halloween uh <laughs> for a video game horror game called soma which is all about people putting their minds in virtual spaces while there's still people around and people misabusing those systems in really really terrible ways for like for the pursuit of science and longevity of the human race. It's really very terrifying. But we've got more hate mail to go through, guys, but we're not going to do it right now. In fact, we're going to go on a break and then we'll come right back with more heated debates. For more hate family. after the break. More uh -huh. hate after the break. Love it. Go ahead, Larry. Stay Kiss tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. 
Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now, and we have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings, and if you'd like to join us, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, you can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Well, Matt, where do you want to pick up? We're going through hate mail. Listen, we're going to go straight into it. This one is from someone who I'm going to keep anonymous. Uh, they spam my email account, and I'm totally fine with that because we're going to go over the comments of the show. I just want to bring more attention than what's due or cause any sort of like backlash, or whatever. So uh, feel free to keep sending me these emails, and we'll get straight to it. This one I'm going to address out to, let's see, who's going to be the, the lucky random user? John Richards. You're going to be first Woo! on this one. John <laughs> Richards, listen. Um, our, our, our patron today wants to make a point. They want to make a point that there's a slight hypocrisy in atheism. Uh, and it goes like this. I'm here to point out the slight hypocrisy in atheism. And I'm not a theist per se, but I do believe in the truth with a capital T. And it's inevitability to lead to evidence of itself wherever you look. Here's the problem. The truth is always harder to hide than it is to allow, right? You're just not allowing yourself to accept the truth. So this guy has looked up Native Americans, Assyrians, Indians, Greeks, Egyptians, and came to the conclusion that all of these, let me see if I get this point. If all these origins have a speck of truth, okay, here it is. There has to be a single truth that ties all of these systems together from all these desperately located um, cultures, not to mention the huge amount of power leaking from Freemasonry. And if you look at the world, uh, Freemasons rule the world, and you'll notice that they're not atheists at all. So there has to be a connection there. Are you now convinced more of, of this guy's claims? <laughs> I know that's a weird freedom. Can't cancel the show, the guys. He, let me, he won. Let me, he won. Let me summarize it. Let me summarize. Basically, everyone from Egyptians, Greeks, Sumerians, Native Americans, Assyrians, and Indians, while all say the same thing, according to this guy, and the probability of them being disconnected from each other in origin drops dramatically if they're all saying, if they all have a, essentially a speck of truth between them all. How can all these different groups be referring to the same thing? And all be wrong. Well, John Richards. There's, there's there's no reason for any of them to be right, but they can all be wrong. It's perfectly acceptable for people to be wrong en masse with all their various and different uh, explanations. But each uh, of these groups refer to a heavenly beings or some sort of god, and that's and that's his point. So okay. how can how well, can that not be the case? Okay. Well, this is because when primitive man had mysteries that they wanted to explain, hmm. they discovered, well, they observed that all of the powerful events happen above them. You know, thunder, lightning, rain, the wind, the eruptions, they all come down from above. So it was natural for them to assume that there was some power up there in hmm. the heavens that, that was in control of everything. So, but that doesn't mean they're right. They're just variously wrong with their, <laughs> with their own details about that potential explanation. Stick to looking for evidence. That's my advice. Okay, Dred, I'm going to have you weigh in on this. Aren't all okay. these things? Aren't all these guys saying <clears throat> the same thing? Anyway, Dred, what are you saying? I hopefully my dog isn't making too much of a racket here in the no, microphone. It's all good. Good. Um, so again, I think we talked on uh, the Global Atheist News Review last week. Um, we mentioned uh, hyperactive agency detection. Okay, and that's detecting or detecting agency behind natural events, yeah. uh, such as the rustle in the leaves. Is it the wind or is it a tiger? Yeah. And you're better off to think it's a tiger because if you're wrong, you die and you don't pass on your genes. Another thing that uh, coincides with that is pareidolia, where you see 
faces or 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 uh, figures uh, in inanimate objects, um, which then you place that hyperactive agency detection into. So you're seeing faces and agency and all kinds of natural things, which of course would lead to a tendency to um, ascribe them to be fairies or spirits or gods or whatever. Mm. Mm. Dred, Dred's right. It's an adaptation to imagine that there's some uh, authority, some agent, because that's a, that's a good evolutionary survival tactic. It's a good so, primitive way to understand things very quickly for yes. the sake of survival. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Larry, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with all of that, by the way. But um, there's another common thread that runs through all this, which is what the guy is talking about is the human ability uh, or inclination to use this type of belief for their own personal good. In other right. words, a class system, of a priest yeah. class oh. system. Um, how many times, has, you know, in, throughout mm -hmm. history, has someone said, you know, they're out there breaking the back in the field and they see a preacher go by on a horse, say, I feel the calling. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I feel the call to go preach. And because it's it's basically an easy gig, it it takes advantage of people's supernatural uh, yeah. inclination. Uh, they get automatically higher, uh, raised up in the ranks of society, yeah, as yeah. it were. And it's for what? Right. For what? Because of people having this belief that there's something uh, above us that uh, we have to be responsible to. Mm, yeah, and also instills a lot of other, in my opinion, paranoia and mental debilitations that's mm -hmm. really hard to kick off if you're raised in that kind of culture. Yeah. Eric, yeah, Victor, have... would you want to weigh in on this? We got, uh, go go ahead, Victor. No, just that it, it didn't reference uh, nothing else that they just believe in something bigger. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and would that prove, uh, and that proves that they're, must have to be something bigger. No, that, no, that, that's logical at all. No, which, which is there's another natural tendency, isn't it? Because we all had parents, and um, m most of us had a father, and mm. therefore there was in our upbringing an authority figure who nope, could sense. look after right. and save us from all the hazards and so on. And when growing up is tough, we still right. want one of those. Right, right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. right. Eric, you have clearly not. No, not met my mother. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Eric. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I like how he left off all of the, the religions that don't have a heaven. Um, he didn't list <laughs> any of those, right? Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or all the religions that, you know, started up and fizzled away and weren't passed on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were never written down. Right. Um, but but I, I'm seeing a parallel in the argument. People like to make the argument, too, about pyramids, right? They're like, how could there be these pyramid-type structures, you know, in Egypt and in, in, um, in Mexico? Made by all and, these brown people. Like, right, think about right. that. It's yeah. like, think, think about how that – there how? must be some – it's like, oh, it's just a really good way of stacking blocks so they right. don't fall down. You can't, right. you can't do it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> if you could do it the other way, then I'd go for God or right, yeah. Yeah. right, 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 right. right. Mm -hmm. Pyramids that's, like that, yeah, I'm yeah, all over. Pyramids mm -hmm. like this, that's that's how you do it. There's no other way you could do that. Right. Like, and look, it's still the same shape, no matter what you do. <clears throat> right. yeah. Mind you, if you could spin them fast enough. Mm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I want to throw out two quick things. One, uh, the talk about a great father kind of sounds like fatherhood theory to me, sort of like simulation theory. When you're around computers, simulation theory seems really appealing. When you're around fathers, fatherhood seems really appealing. And when we look at God, when we before computers, we're like, well, there has I came from a father, you came from a father, so there must be one great father above mm -hmm. us all, right? Like that's really appealing because we're just pulling for stuff around that we kind of understand that has a mystery behind it like genetics or biology. And we're just applying that mystery to greater un understood explanations. And when we have a better understanding of the world, we just pull up another one. It's like, I don't know how computers work, but couldn't the universe be a simulation? And I can argue right. that with confidence. Yeah. It's like, do you know how, do you know how much electricity it would actually take to get billions and billions of people? Like the earth may not be able to support this level of fidelity, like this processing power. Like we'd be in a carbon defunct planet to get that many people instead. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. but, but, but the humans are the battery, 
the electric electricity. <laughs> yes. Um, Dyson spheres. That would take care of it. Dyson spheres, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. And we're and you see how I try to pull us out and there's just arms <laughs> pulling us back in. All right. John Richards, what's up? Do you mean do you know what, what you said about you had a father and there was a father, he had a father yeah, yeah. and a father yeah, yeah, before yeah. him, and so yeah. on and so forth. You yes. know what that means? That God had one. The common ancestor is right. God. Ooh. Yeah. And mm -hmm. let me pull let me pull some point on another thing too. I feel like <laughs> cultures like human beings evolve as well. And un, and like cultures, they spread. And so he's referring to Egypt, Greece, Assyrian, Indians. You know, all those are within walking distance of each other if you're willing to wait a couple yeah, thousand sure. years. Yeah. Right. And that's a pretty good explanation for why all those cultures had a somewhat similar belief that desperately verged from like a, a singular point. Um yes. That's they, not uncommon. That happens all yeah. the time. They weren't. Yeah. yeah, they didn't arise in isolation of one another. That's for darn sure. Sure is. Okay. I mean, even the Silk Road. I mean, you know, there was there was lots of trade and travel between these different civilizations. Um, hmm. You know, yeah, they it's not like they they were uh, raised in that, you know, that uh, cone of silence that on right. get smart, you know, <laughs> there's a. There's a reason why Native Americans have a lot of Asian features. It's not because they just like popped out of the ground, you know. Oh, that wasn't them. because Jesus visited them? <laughs> or John Smith? No, no, no. That's it's kind of crazy. Guys, I got another email from this fellow. I'm going to send it out to our own uh, Eric Green. Eric Green, listen, here's the thing. Atheists ironically resort to their emotions as opposed to their rationality and can't see the actual good effects of well-meaning Christians. There is much of the time just spent on hate, aversion, or distaste. But if people would just sit in silence and clear their head of notions, they would have they wouldn't have to call themselves atheists. They would just exist and say they don't know. And hardline atheists wouldn't have issues with the church or people being churched up, but they would have but they but even if they do, they'd still have no clue what Christianity is, even to the slightest degree. Why can't Christians just shut up? <laughs> uh, uh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, well, first of all, he make he or she made the mistake that I hear a lot of people make. Um, atheists don't know there's no God. <laughs> um, they, they made a comment in there. Can't they just say they don't know? Yeah, most atheists are agnostic atheists. Yeah. They don't know right. if there's a God. Right. I don't believe in one, uh, but, I, but I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, that that's just a pet peeve. <laughs> mine. They don't seem to get that right. Um, then, I, if, if I understood this correctly, their argument is Christians are good, therefore yeah. there's a God? You can't see the actual good effects of well-meaning Christians, and you instead, um, atheists spend their time on hate, aversion, or distaste. But if people would just sit in silence and clear their head of notions, they wouldn't have to call themselves atheists. Yeah, I, I just, I, well, I don't I don't see the hate. Actually, a lot of times when I meet someone, and after a while they, they know that I'm an atheist, they're, they usually say, and you're actually you're actually really nice for an atheist. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've heard that more than once. Sure, yeah. sure. Dread, sure, going ahead. That was the point. I was exactly that's I'll reinforce that one. Is Ooh. you could easily flip that around instead of just talking about well-meaning Christians. Christianity has nothing to do with well-meaning. Mm. Right? Yep. Uh, yep. you could well be a well-meaning yep. person without you could be a well-meaning Hindu, a well-meaning yep. Sikh, a well-meaning right. Muslim, a well-meaning Christian, a well-meaning atheist. It doesn't matter if you're well-meaning. It's independent of whatever of your the religion that you adhere to. Seems good to point. Be. Good point. Good point. And at that point, it doesn't matter whether you're an atheist lambasting them or not. It's just like, right. hey, well-meaning people are good. We want more of those. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. And ideally, right. they don't have monopoly on well-meaning. Uh, yeah. Larry, got to get to you. I saw you. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I'm taking uh, well, not offense, but exception to his saying, you wouldn't have to call yourself an atheist. What the heck's wrong with calling yourself an atheist? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's an honest appellation that describes our condition. We don't believe in God. That's yeah. the uh, definition of the word. Enough. It may be a problem for you. It's not for us. Yeah. But you might want to look at your own, uh, yourself, and see why it's a problem. John Richards, throwing it up. Great point, Larry. What he's doing is revealing his misconception about what atheists are and what atheism mm -hmm. is. Yes. He's he's taking us down the the route of aggressive atheist, you know, militant atheist. We aren't. There's there's no reason for us to be like that because we don't have any doctrine to impose on everyone and try and control them. 
That's right. what religions do. We don't do that. We have no need to do that. What we're trying to do is promote critical thinking Ooh. so that people can see their way out of the depths of despair that they've been buried uh -huh. in during yes. their upbringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're born in a cave, it's really hard to get out of the cave unless you know how to yeah. climb. We're teaching people yeah. how to climb. Yeah. Victor, yeah. got a question for you. Why can't you just shut up? <laughs> <laughs> not you particularly <laughs> why why do atheists have to speak up why can't they just be quiet sit like literally says if people just sit in silence and clear their head of notions they wouldn't have to call themselves atheists why can't yeah, you just why, be quiet about the stuff that you don't really understand to the slightest degree which is christianity why can't christianity just shut up yes <laughs> <laughs> hey. time time before Yo. you ask before you ask Victor to shut up, you ought to know that he's taller <laughs> than six foot ten. Wow, big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of spreading, Vikings were very good at that. Anyway, just, uh, hey, Dread Pirate Higgs, what's up? Well, I was going to say, just with respect to that, that last uh, comment, um, when I left Masonry, um, I was a Freemason. And oh. the, the, one of the fellas I, I dealt with uh, quite regularly when I told him I, I could no longer do it because I uh, I had become an atheist um, to the Christian God. Uh, he said, "Oh, so you're one of those people that hate God," Ooh. and that's <laughs> where that person I think makes the mistake right. of thinking that atheists are not people who don't have evidence to support a God, right. but actually hate a God they think exists. No, yeah, because. Yeah. It's easier to straw man that point to make yes, sure you absolutely. understand why it's absolutely. it's a bad thing to be an atheist than to understand what it actually means and recognize that you have questions now that you have yep. to ask yourself. It is yep. the hardest thing. Listen, the most fundamental conversation you can have with any person who's a Christian mm -hmm. who knows you're an atheist is to make sure they understand what the definition of atheism <clears throat> actually is. Because yeah, yeah. No, no, I know it because I had a friend who's an atheist. That's like me saying, well, I had a third grade teacher who was a Christian. I know all the forms of Christianity. I don't have to hear it from you. Listen to the person that you're talking to. Use the definitions that they're working with because typically they're coming from a point of view of experience and they can inform you of what they mean. And if they're saying, no, when you say mm -hmm. atheists hate God, let me explain to you that I'm an atheist and I don't hate God. Well, you're not an atheist. That's like, I am. Let me explain to you what this word means, please. Yes. It's yeah. The most yeah. Get your nomenclature yeah. right. Yes. Then we can have yeah. a filling argument with words because we have to uh, use words to communicate. What's I always like to ask, ask them where they got that information. Yeah. The pastor. You know, who told you <laughs> that? The pastor, and then yeah. you, know, you might want to take another look at that person or that channel or that, that podcast. Source. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, they've had their heads filled with this mm. concept, mm -hmm. this stereotype, mm. by their leaders right. who wish to control them. They've mm. got an agenda. And the if you go down that route of denigrating non-members mm. of your tribe, it, it, it leads to dehumanization, to victimization, right. and eventually to murder. Right. Don't do it. Yep. Oh, yep. man. Eric. Yeah, uh, just quick, quick point here, because I'm it. sure you want to move on. Um, the other one I hear often, too, is that atheists worship the devil. <laughs> and that's bizarre, <laughs> yeah. too. It's like, well, yeah. no, 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 I don't believe in a god. I certainly <laughs> don't believe in the devil. Yeah, um, it's, it's just a bizarre. And maybe it's maybe a, some Christians or, or other religious folks just can't fathom a godless world so they they right. have to assume we that everybody least, believes they yeah. just hate them you know? yeah, you, yeah. And, and i'm also going to say this too like again the bible feels like it was written by a megalomaniac doing their own autobiography with a really nice person in the background being like if you believe everything in this book you're also as dumb and as evil as this tyrant but I'm going to, for example, teach nudists that nutrition is important and they should have access to knowledge. I'm going to point out that this guy drowned everybody on the world for, for no good reason and drowned babies. I'm going to go and talk to his son that he brought to, to that he was planned to like hang on a cross for someone else's sins and be like, hey, do you want to worship me? And when that God's, and when that son says no, I'm going to leave because I'm not going to force people to worship me. I will accept no as an answer. And I'll even show up face to face and be like, hey, do you want to worship me or not? Okay, totally fine. See you later. And that will be no repercussions whatsoever afterwards. I'm with, like every story of Satan in the Bible from Job all the way down to like uh, Genesis is just, here's a guy that I don't understand why he's the evil one. 
when the tyrant is in the same chapter doing substantially more evil stuff every right. single time. Well, yeah. it says in the Bible that God created evil. I mean, so Isaiah says that. Right, right, right. Yeah. He he developed the 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 crying screams of women and children being murdered. Like he made the the blood spurts of serial murderers activities. Like he made everything, right? So the bad stuff counts too. Farts, like people keep throwing out waterfalls <laughs> and stuff like that. Like this extra nipple that I have that I don't need. Yeah. Like yeah, I got two of them. I didn't even need one. Think yeah, about like all this cancer, you know, name other it. cancer, misshaped yeah. harps at birth, mistreatments, like well, those are well, no, he made everything, right? So that counts. Yeah. We got to think about that. And yeah. and when we look at Satan, he's like actually in my head, the far without saying it, if we're just willing to look at like you know, inferences, like he's the far more moral character in that book compared to God the tyrant. It's just so much more straightforward. You know, I, you know, like the Marvel universe, he's he's an anti-hero. Yeah, yeah. He's he, he's he's not even like what's the most evil thing he did? He thought he was pretty, and God was like, Well, he's not prettier than me. Like, what is <laughs> the worst thing he ever did i don't understand it anyway well, a lot of people say that the worst thing he did was he, he killed uh, job's family and took away his crops he, and all that but oh, it no, was god not. who said he could yes not only that but it was god who made the wager that he could and allowed right. that to happen yeah, and right it was all and, on a bet and yeah. when it was all said and done god didn't bring them back to life he just gave god some new wives and some yeah. new cattle it's just like yo well, mm -hmm. that solves the problem and it's like yeah. for a guy no. who's in the afterlife you got to think about that it's just like okay I'll see these guys later, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, John Richards, what's up? There's one problem with this idea that God created everything and has one that problem? capability. One well, problem. The, one, the one I'm going to itemize right now, <laughs> which, which is that he can't create money. He's got to scrounge <laughs> that from his congregations. Yeah. Right. I can make yeah. everything except for money, which is why I need you. Yeah. I need your help. No, it's I, one of my favorite memes these days is when when uh, when you need money, your preacher tells you to go to God, but when he needs money, he goes to you. Right. Yeah. Now, if prayer worked, why wouldn't he just pray for money? Right. Sure. Yeah. No, it's absolutely true. Yeah, how uh, long the church would stay open? Guys, that. we got we got four minutes before we go, and I want to talk about Freemasonry. So who else the Dread Pirate to handle this one? This is the last section of the mail that we got from the same author. He's basically saying this. I wish more people leaning atheists would see that it's not Christians at all. That's the problem. But the rulers of the churches, who each have their one foot in Freemasonry, leading the Templars to destroy, which is funny because atheists like to use the Crusades as a point of leverage, yet it's still just evil manipulating people who want to love their neighbors. Now look at the world. Do you see? You can see that free Freemasons do rule the world. Look at the most powerful people who rule the world. And you'll notice that not a single one of them is atheists. I'm going to add this. Yeah. Checkpoint. Checkmate. That's all. Well, there you go. Yeah, but uh, as they say, correlation doesn't equal causation. Mm -hmm. Just because a bunch of people are dressing up in funny uh, garb and uh, marching around a, a windowless room uh, performing ancient rites, as they call them. Oh man, I had um, no idea that was. It even doesn't thing. affect. Well, it doesn't affect anything. Mm. Like there's no effect. It doesn't affect the world in any way. No. Um, and really, it's a it's a bunch of old white guys getting together to uh, to uh, grist each other essentially just to give advantage to each other um and so is uh xi jinping is he a freemason <laughs> <laughs> he said all the yeah, leaders right. of the world were freemason right. yeah, yeah. Is, look at, is, i'm sure putin isn't yeah putin <laughs> he uh, says look at the most powerful people who rule the world so maybe elon musk maybe you got some like rich people i don't know i don't know how it yeah goes. you know yeah, mason masonry really is on a decline um, it's harder to uh, capture uh, younger minds um, into that sort of ancient, I mean, it's going back to Solomon, you know, and, and the building of Solomon's temple, like who really cares about that stuff anymore? Hmm. It's just, it's antiquated. It's, it's just banal, really. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've had, uh, we've had just locally, we've had two uh, Freemasons halls uh, closed down due to lack of membership. Wow. So, it, it, I mean, it's like Christianity. It's like anything. Oh, you I know, just wanted to point out too, just quickly, that 53.1% of British Columbians are irreligious. They do nice. not identify with any religion. Hey, we are now the majority. 
well, Pestafarians are, are included in that because they don't <laughs> consider us religious. So, right, sure, sure. Um, <laughs> Is that funny? Bastards. As long as, yeah. as long as you don't now <laughs> claim total ownership of righteousness right. which, is, which is what these correspondents seem to have done yeah. they they have they should look at their own, look in the mirror guys you know uh, guys, we may have we yeah may we're getting ready room, to wrap up yeah, room for one more question maybe or go on to the to the wrap I, up i think we should get ready for wrapping up but john richards i think you had a point did you want to make one more comment before we were all yeah done? i just made it the, the what what these religious people have done is hmm. stolen righteousness stolen morality that we have mm -hmm. evolved they've yeah. claimed ownership of something that isn't theirs to own right. right um i like the the hate mail i don't mind it keep it coming the thing is you know whether it's an argumentation for god or not the thing is it's an extraordinary claim and that requires extraordinary evidence i don't think there's ever going to be a single email That'll make me believe in a supernatural God, regardless of the length or the grammatical clarity or the reasonable argumentation that's provided. I need a higher standard of evidence. A photograph of you sitting on Jupiter is not going to make me believe that you went to Jupiter, even if there's great lighting and HDR quality. You need yeah, yeah. a higher standard of evidence. We're not going to get it through emails, but keep sending them to us. We don't, we don't mind. We don't mind. It doesn't mean we're closed minded. It just means you're not meeting my standard of criteria for me to believe something like that. I'm Why not you... really. I'm not really here. <laughs> He's not really that tugboat isn't just cycling back and forth tenant style. Victor, anything that you recommend that we check out? Yeah, the Alpha Course uh, uh, yes. that the churches are, are are doing. It's free. You can see the clips online. I'm Very I'm cool. I'm doing one now, and it's hilarious. Really, that's awesome. Yeah, where can we where yeah, can yeah. we get to it? What can you plug the link or? Uh, just just search. Uh, Alpha, alpha course. Yeah. Uh, is it alpha training? No, it's, I, I think it's called alpha course. Yeah. I can send you later. It's, okay. it's awesome. Nice. The food's good. The food's good, though, I hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. And free. Hey. Yep. Hey. Uh, That's the way to a man's soul, isn't it? Through his belly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw this one up to Boudreau. Anything that you recommend that we check out? Well, um, I can't share it on the on the radio radio video radio show here, but uh, I'm going to pop in our our group chat just for Dread Pirate. Um, many years ago for Halloween, uh, we built a pirate ship and went. Uh, uh, we took a car, cut off the top, put a sail on it, dressed up as wow. pirates, and uh, uh, and. Uh, drove to a, a bar and had a cool i'd love to see that so I, put, I shot it in the uh messenger but r there you go right. and guys thank you so much we're out of time on the show we'll go straight to larry uh feel free to check out mind pirate on youtube F check out global atheist news review it's going to be up here uh later out and we'll send a, a feed out to a john richard channel you can find me on let's chat on youtube larry why don't you take us out Okay, sure. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com, which be, when you go there, be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5. And I, of course, have a book on, you, on Amazon, sorry, called Atheism. What's it all about? If you'd like to know more about it, I recommend either getting the book or going to my website, because a lot of the articles in the books are on the website. You can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. They're, until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Good job.